sometimes people delay getting tests because they feel like what would I do if there is something wrong or they don't really want to know if something is wrong but I will say that getting tests and having clarity is a priceless piece of your fertility journey. A lot of couples get stuck going around in circles for the longest time because they don't understand some of the basic things that are happening for them that if they were to take charge of and change would transform everything. And this really applies to male fertility testing, especially when infertility and miscarriage is still seen so much as a female problem. It's far from the truth, really. Fertility challenges and miscarriages and even failed treatments are a team effort. And so if we want to overcome those challenges, we do need to play fertility like a team sport. That's why I always say fertility is a team sport. And so understanding what are the major things, the most important things that you need to know about your fertility and your quality of sperm is going to be incredibly important as part of a team in order to be able to give yourselves as a couple the best possible chance of taking home a healthy baby. So today we're going to talk about what are the very specific things that you absolutely want to make sure you have covered and when to get it done. Let's start there because I think that's a very easy um, first step. Essentially, before you're starting to want to try to have a baby, you want to have your semen analysis and all of your workups in terms of general health complete. You know, that was one very important piece that I had my husband do even before we were married, literally six months into our relationship. It's like, let's figure out what's happening here. And he was incredibly gracious. You know, we didn't end up choosing to start planning and having a family until about eight years of being together. And mind you, fertility and male fertility changes substantially in that period of time. But it was nice knowing where we stood. It was nice knowing that, yes, although he had zero morphology at the time and there were other sperm parameters that needed addressing, it was something that we could start focusing on and taking into consideration in our long-term plan. Now, if you've already been trying for a while and you still are you know, not quite where you want to be, and tests either have been done some time ago or have not been done ever, you want to make sure that you get on that as soon as possible. I've put two videos um, underneath this video. There's links to different videos that I've done in the past for a different segment called Ask Gabriella Rosa, which are much longer um, talks. And one was specifically around what are the tests that you need to get done and where and really at, at what level, which we'll cover on in this video very, very quickly. And then another test and another video or another t segment that was all about what else do we need to know, you know, beyond motility, morphology and count. Because those are the three main things that get tested when you do a general semen analysis. You always want to make sure that you go to an andrology lab or a fertility clinic semen assessment and analysis lab you don't want to go to a general lab for a semen analysis because in doing so what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a very general not very specific and usually not very good quality semen analysis because the parameters used even though they're using the who parameters the world health organization parameters for most labs um they usually will also compare results across the entire lab and if you think about it, an andrology lab from a fertility clinic is going to see infinitely more um, number of semen analysis that are going to come through that lab compared to a general lab who maybe do all other sorts of blood tests, who might see much more of a full blood count um, reference range. And reference ranges do get adjusted depending on where you're going and depending on where you are in the world and all of those kinds of things based on the lab. So you always want to go to a fertility lab, an andrology lab, okay? And you want to get things like a general semen analysis done, count, morphology, motility. Morphology is the shape of the sperm, motility is how well it swims. But you don't want to just leave it there. You want to have a semen culture that's going to tell us if there is an overgrowth of any kind of bacteria 
within the semen, which means that we then need to be working internally to address. You know, we did a semen, uh, we did a um, sperm parameter meta-analysis here in the clinic, looking at the association between bacterial vaginosis associated bacteria with the quality of semen. And we noticed that for women who had BV, bacterial vaginosis, or other kind of bacterial overgrowth in their vaginas, that, that impacted the male sperm and the quality of the, the semen and the sperm as well. And so we, and we always treat both partners for mostly those reasons, is that you know, there, there is exchange that happens in terms of microbiome. So looking at both partners there is going to be important if you have a history of thrush or BV or any of those kinds of bacterial or other overgrowth is important to actually have a look and see how the partner is being affected as well. So a, a semen culture is going to be useful. A DNA fragmentation is also going to be useful because even if you don't pick up in a semen, in a semen culture that there are issues, DNA fragmentation being elevated could be a signal as well of other underlying issues that are getting in the way. So then of course there's blood tests, overall general health um, workup that is going to be important, genetic carrier typing, you know, all of those different things are going to be very important as well as a physical examination, looking at the size of the testicles. If they're too small, there might be testicular uh, um, failure. There might be other issues that we need to address. There might be lumps and, you know, an ultrasound could be useful to be essentially helping to understand why that's the case and so on. So having a proper physical examination and workup, bloods, you know, general health, overall, good quality workup is going to be vital for optimum fertility in males as well. As well as, of course, what we've talked about in terms of very specifically looking at semen, semen parameters, semen culture, uh, DNA fragmentation, and anything else that any of those other tests might flag that we need to test further. So hope that helps and until next time, bye for now.